Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes. This is the talk series. CG has made some changes to Grand Arena that I think for the most part is going to be pretty good, but there's some nuances here that we need to break down. What CG announced today is there's going to be additional teams required for the top six divisions in Grand Arena, and also that the distribution of our overall GP to different divisions is going to be changed. They also give us some information on the number of banners required for different prize tiers is going to change. I don't know why they gave so much real estate to this. It's fine, it's not that important. The big important information though is how our galactic power requirements are changing for each division. That deserved more of a table. I put one together to break that information down. Here is what the changes look like. Before, Division 1 used to be 4.5 million GP and up. Now that 4.5 million GP puts you in Division 5. In Division 1, there's going to be four additional teams needed on defense. Divisions 2 through 4 are each going to need three additional teams, Division 5, 2, and Division 6, one additional team. So these are the divisions that are going to see an increase in overall defenses required. But that's only part of the story because what we're looking at here too is if you were 3 million GP before, that puts you in Division 4, six teams needed on defense. Now that 3 million GP puts you in Division 8 and you put half the teams on defense. For how I play the game, I wouldn't like that. That also means there's a potential where if you are going up against a person who has a Galactic Legend and you don't, you could much more easily be shut down by a player who has a Galactic Legend early versus before. If you had the roster depth, you could win against Galactic Legend players early on because they wouldn't have the depth to handle your roster. That may no longer be the case, and I think there is room here for CG to make some improvements, and I'm not convinced that they studied the back end GP changes as much as they looked at the top end. The other thing that's going on is fleets are staying the same for Division 1 and Division 2. That's staying as two fleets. For me, I don't like that because I just went from Division 1 to Division 3 because I'm at 6.2, 6.3 million GP. I also invest heavily in fleets. I like fleets. It's one of my biggest advantages. And now we get a boring scenario. Like I actually think fleets could be added to Division 3, possibly Division 4, because what's going to end up happening for a player like me is most players I matched with have both Negotiator and Malevolence. We're both going to end up putting Negotiators on defense, countering it with our Malevolences, and that entire fleet matchup is not going to matter at all to the greater Grand Arena. And for me, I think that's just boring. Like, I don't need the advantage for winning or losing, but I would like it to be fun and not just busy work, which is what I think is going to be happening for us higher GP players who now are reduced to one fleet defense. The other thing that is going on here is you, you can see before, like with my new account, you can climb from Division 9 upwards pretty quickly. That is not going to be the case. You're going to spend a lot more time in your division than you would have before. The progression is much is at a much slower rate than it would have been before. But there is also from their next, uh, their, they had to issue an update that the rewards are going to have to be tweaked a little bit because if you're falling in division, that means if they didn't make any changes, your rewards would be nerfed. They have come out and said that is not going to be the case. CG later in the day issued this addendum saying that you can expect to receive rewards that are similar to what you were receiving before any of these changes. That's fine. I'm more concerned about the gameplay and the enjoyment of the game mode. This is my favorite game mode. And I want to make sure the competitive nature of it stays. I suspect that after these changes are institute, instituted, CG may have to revisit some of this to make sure that the integrity of this game mode is maintained. 
And I wasn't going to do any gearing until later, but because this news came out, I think we'll still wrap up this video as we normally do with the free-to-play gearing of my roster. I had been wanting to take Jedi Knight Revan to Relics so I can be running the ideal Jedi Master Luke team. I've now taken him up to Relic 5. We should have him at Relic 7 before the next Grand Arena. But I think there are some interesting interactions with Cody and the Bad Batch. I think I'm going to bring him up to 11. He's been on this favorite list for months and months as like the biggest side project of everything I've been working on just for territory battles. I think we'll throw this last stun cuff on for this tier and take him up to 11. There's a furnace there, a Nubian design tech, a Nubian scanner. And then we got some hollow projector. Is that that many hollow projectors? Okay, so that avoids putting on another stun cuff. I was expecting a stun cuff. And two Marisons. I don't really want to put those on, but we're going to be done with Cody here. We're just going to take him up. That's three hollow projectors at this level, though. Because there's one on that, on that fusion furnace. But we're done with him and can move on. That makes me happy. And if you're new to this channel because you got recommendations from YouTube from the video I posted yesterday, I recommend you watch my Methods Improving Grand Arena video, How to Improve Your Roster for Grand Arena, where I talk about my philosophy of why going after Gear 11 matters. It's all about understanding the gear requirement jump from gear 11 to gear 12 you can build out a ton more roster depth by going after gear 11 characters basically for every character you take from 11 to 12 you could be gearing up two to three characters for two gear 11 for that price it is a very quick way of increasing your roster depth you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take rose tico up to 11 so i don't have to look at her anymore She's now at gear 11. That's our staging ground. We are going to hold off there. Take her off the favorites list. For those Galactic Legend Ray requirements, I think I only have a veteran smuggler to take to gear 11. Then I can start taking characters up to 12. But I think we are going to wrap it up there for this video. Thank you for watching, and thank you to any new people here who came from recommendations from watching my last video. I'm going to put up a couple methods videos that relate to the overall philosophy of this channel. This is a free-to-play channel, and we look at ways to optimize our roster performance to excel in this game against other types of players who may or may not be spenders. Thank you for watching, and thank you to anyone who's here from watching the last video and off their YouTube recommendations. We have a free-to-play focus on this channel. We focus on roster optimization and exploiting CG's algorithms for our benefit. I put up a couple videos up here that'll give you an overall taste of what we try to do here. Be safe out there everyone and be excellent to each other.